Bioshock 2. It's literally boring. The game's just too easy. Wait, they made a second one of these? Have you seen the autosave feature? Bro, it's like kind of underrated. Might just be the best sequel of all time. As you may know, there's a lot of controversy around Bioshock 2. So I wanted to figure out for myself, is it actually good? Is it actually bad? Why does everyone feel differently about it? Before we get into my opinion of the game, because, well, there's plenty of opinions out there, as you saw. Let's talk about the actual facts, okay? I'm going to be comparing Bioshock 1 to Bioshock 2 to give you some perspective of how this sequel did in comparison to its original. So, so Bioshock 2 came out February 9th of 2010. And the original game came out August 21st of 2007. So about a two and a half year gap here between the first Bioshock and the second in terms of release dates. Now, across the board, ratings are actually very similar. Steam, same rating. IGN, same rating. Metacritic went from a 96% on the first game to an 88% on the second game. But overall, we're talking comparable results here. So it's not like Bioshock 2 had a huge plummet in ratings and everyone hated it. Now, in terms of financial performance, Bioshock 2 sold around 3 million copies within the first couple years of launch before Infinite came out. And Bioshock 1 also sold 3 million copies before Bioshock 2 came out. So in terms of copies sold, very, very similar. Obviously, I don't have the exact number and those numbers I don't believe are available, but 3 million to 3 million, we're talking, we're within the same range. Now, Bioshock 2 publicly was not nearly as praised as Bioshock 1 was. So it's reported that 2K was pretty disappointed in this result as, as you're making a sequel for a game, you're really expecting that we're going to put all this extra effort in, hoping that the sequel does better than the original. Now, this doesn't happen very often as we have seen over the, the history of all games, but that's obviously what they were shooting for. So they were disappointed to see that it did pretty similar. Now for the actual development of the game, the people working on the first Bioshock with Irrational Game Studios, um, they actually recruited a lot of those people to become 2K Marin. Marin? Marin? Marin Marin? Uh, how do you, how do you? Marin. They brought over Jordan Thomas, who was a level designer on the first game, to become the creative director on the second game. And 2K Marin was also reportedly uh, built up of other people that were part of the original Irrational Games team, but in terms of the big names who worked on the first game, we don't see them. So I think we almost move into our first like controversial piece of Bioshock 2, and that's that the original developers of Bioshock 1 that were part of the Irrational Games team weren't the ones who made this Bioshock 2 storyline didn't work on the actual creative development, um, and they just weren't part of the 2K Marin team. So that's where we get some of the differences between Bioshock 1 and Bioshock 2, it's just because the people that worked on it were different. Okay, so moving from the actual factual parts of Bioshock 2's performance and how they did into my opinion of the game, overall, I think that the story was lacking in depth compared to the first game. It almost felt like I was playing. Uh, like a fun DLC of the first game, but to call it its own game, it felt like there wasn't much there for story-wise. Now, I know some people highly praise Bioshock 2's story, and obviously everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but for me, it was lacking in depth and didn't feel like the ideas behind this story were very unique. You know, Bioshock 1, we're talking about someone who's trying to create a utopia, in that case, Andrew Ryan, in this game, it's a very similar situation. It's not Andrew Ryan now, it's Sophia Lamb, and she's also trying to create a utopia, and we're still in Rapture, and there's still little sisters involved, and the core elements are the same, which I think are, that's okay. I don't think that's a problem, but I didn't enjoy that the gameplay was so similar to the first, because in the first game, obviously, we're a human, and in this game, we're a big daddy. So obviously, I think like, some of the aesthetic aspects, like the weapon wheel, the Eve wheel and stuff like that, I think those are fine. But I think the actual systems in place 
like the weapon systems, the health systems. For a big daddy, felt like they should be so much different in this game if we were going to be portraying a completely different character. So they didn't feel very well thought out. It didn't feel like there was like a lot of uh, efforts put into that part. Obviously, the hacking system was changed drastically from the first game into this game. I personally liked the hacking system in the first game more because it felt like it was much more interactive. In this game, it felt like so simplistic, kind of just like timing based. It, it didn't feel like I had to think much. It was kind of just like stare at the screen, click at the right time. That was it. Um, some people really liked that change because they felt that the hacking in the first game was way too complex, took way too much time, which it did, to be fair. But I thought it was more well thought out and exciting. There were also fewer boss fights in this game compared to the first. And I also felt like the bosses were much less interesting in this game compared to the first game. In the first game, we have bosses with a lot of character development, it feels like, at least we have so many different like audio logs and radio messages that come through explaining uh, what the boss might have as a background and why they are what the way that they are. And in this game, there is some of that, but it just doesn't feel like there's nearly as much thought out storyline and character development as the first game. I will say I got the good ending in my first playthrough of this game, and I really enjoyed the ending. I thought the ending was comparable in feeling for me as the first game it felt like it was able to draw out a lot of the same emotions as i got in the first game and i really appreciated that and i thought that they did that well the research part of the game now in bioshock one i hated the research and in this game i think i took a lot of that bias that i had from the first game and applied it here so i still didn't care about research at all and thought it was completely pointless but the system was improved for research. They gave you more of an incentive to do it, but I was just so jaded from the first game's research that I didn't even touch it. The world and the graphics were beautiful. I would say better than the first game and uh, some of like the, the world building. Um, it felt like uh, they almost went down a darker path with some of the horror aspects and it was almost more graphic, but in an acceptable way, I felt like I liked it more. Um, and the actual, uh, obviously, Rapture was already a great idea in the first game. So they just continued to build off of that, which I thought worked very well for them in this game. I also thought some of the new enemies that they made were exciting. Um, some of them even scary. Uh, the the splicer, like they're like the, the jugglers or something. I don't remember exactly the, the name of the, the enemy, but those guys were crazy. Loved the way that they looked. The way that they moved was super freaky. Um, it was kind of like sporadic weird movements that just made them feel super inhumane. And I wanted to bring up a few things that I saw in comments and reviews that I thought were worth noting. Um, people talked about how there was no reason to ever sacrifice a little sister. Like there was no incentive for the players. Like, why would you be sacrificing a little sister? They said that you got like a little more Adam. And I know that that part's true, but if you played the first game, you realize that you didn't need that much Adam to get the actual like upgrades that you needed slash wanted. So it was I was hoping that they would add some kind of like big incentive to like, hey, if you had sacrificed a little sister, you know, you would have gotten this crazy upgrade that's literally impossible to get otherwise. That would have made, I think, the game much more exciting and would have made the possibility for alternate endings more interesting as well. Um, and then another big complaint was that there's just too many weapons. Um, I think that they had this difficulty in the first game as well. There's so many weapons that you, you know, like you can't help yourself, but to choose a few that you actually align with. So in conclusion, is Bioshock 2 a bad game? No, it's not a bad game. It's not a bad sequel either. Um, did it live up to the expectations of the community and maybe the developers? Not so much. Um, and that could be due to some of the things we discussed today. I think that it's hard to put the blame on the developers because the team from the first game had changed so drastically moving into the second game that it made expectations for a similar result, if not better, kind of hard to, to pull through. So we give Bioshock 2 one paw out of one paw. So I think that's a pretty good rating. I think Bioshock 1 got maybe two paws out of one paw. So I can give you some perspective on how good we thought it was, but 
Thank you for watching the video. We really appreciate it. Let me know what you thought of Bioshock 2, maybe what you also heard about Bioshock 2, because there's definitely a lot of uh, mixed signals flying through the air. So I'd love to hear maybe some cool stories from any reviews you read or heard from friends. Um, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to see any more content. And we appreciate your time. And until next time, farewell.